number. It won't be till next month. Good morning and welcome, 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 welcome. You are worshiping with Horseshoe Drive United Methodist Church and I'm Reverend Molly McGee and today is our fourth Sunday in Advent and we're going to continue to build on our Advent traditions and we're going to lay cloth on the cradle. So if you're in the congregation today and don't have a piece of cloth, raise your hand so we can get you a piece of cloth. If you're at home, grab a bed sheet. You can participate with us too. There's no problem there. We are going to talk today about our fruit, the story of Joseph, and how we live in to the fruit that we have produced. Take a deep breath, sit back, open your heart, open your mind, open your eyes to worship our one true God. Amen. to worship. In the midst of darkness, God brings a new light. Thanks be to God of light. In the midst of confusion and fear, God brings hope and peace. Thanks be to the God of peace. In the midst of strife and stress, God comforts and soothes us. Let us praise God, who truly loves and brings us new life. Amen.
Isaiah said that the Lord spoke to the king and said, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But when the king refused, God would not be stopped. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. God wants us to know, even when we aren't, our, when we aren't sure of ourselves, God wants us to experience God's presence, even when we think we can handle life on our own. God sends us signs of God's presence with us. All we need to do is keep our eyes open and look. Look, the girl shall conceive and bear a son, and so name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. We light these candles, the candles of joyous hope, of proclaimed peace, of deep everlasting joy, and today of presence that speaks of love, as a sign that no matter our circumstance, we know we are not alone.
it's even better from up here. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. We have, um, please stand for the gospel reading. A reading from Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child that she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that the, what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as the angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he didn't have marital relations with her until she gave birth to a son. Joseph called him Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Casey, will you do me a favor? Get the offering plates and put them down here because I'll never be able to get to them otherwise. All right, just things I didn't think about ahead of time. Good morning. morning. Happy Advent. Thank you. We're still in Advent. We're getting closer to that other season, but we're not there yet. Let us pray. God of heaven, God of earth, God of Advent, you create this time for us to prepare. You create this time so that we can learn and grow, so that we can open our hearts to, to what is to come. Jesus, God incarnate in human form, we thank you for offering us this time so we can look within and prepare our hearts, prepare our spirits, look at the fruit we are producing in our lives, the joy, love, peace, faithfulness, hope. Do we have these fruit, the fruit of repentance, and see where we can do better as a child of God? We ask you today, Lord, to keep our hearts and minds open to your presence as it moves among us wherever we are, and to your voice that speaks to us. And Lord, though I'm not worthy to speak for you, I ask that you use me as a vessel which others hear you speak. In the name of our one true God, amen. Okay, our story today is about Joseph. Now, Joseph only makes it into the lectionary, the regular preaching cycle, 
once every three years. We only hear the story of Joseph once every three years, and we don't hear a lot of Joseph. Prior to this scripture, we hear the begottens, the line of Jesus, so we hear about that Joseph came from Jacob from the line of David, who then became the father of Jesus. And then we hear a little bit after about Joseph when, Joseph, when Jesus is a baby and then when they, he's at the temple. Then he kind of disappears from Scripture. Mary's throughout the New Testament, but Joseph kind of disappears. Joseph just gets short shrift. But he's an important figure. But before we talk more about Joseph, I want to stop here And I want to talk a little bit, or get a little bit from you, actually, about two other important characters to the larger Christmas story, and that is they are Ebenezer Scrooge and the Grinch. They are important. They're household names, so they're important. So give me some characteristics. I want you to give me some characteristics of Ebenezer Scrooge and the Grinch. Termites. Grouch or grumpy? Grumpy. Self-centered. Hmm? Negativity. Stingy. Meanness. Okay. I can't hear what you're saying. Rude. Thank you. Yes. It was rude to yell. No, I'm just kidding. Stink, stank, stunk. Yes. All right. Hold that thought. Hold that thought and let's go back to Joseph. Now, Joseph, as we know from the story, is engaged to Mary. He is engaged to a woman who has become pregnant. And you can imagine in the, st- in the day, as it would be today, no one is going, it's the child of God. That must be what happened, the miracle birth. No, that must be. Nobody was thinking that. They're just like we are. They were thinking, yeah, right. And Joseph even, you know, he's a product of his culture. We are all product, products of our culture. And Joseph said, I'm going to be polite, I'm going to do the right thing, but I'm just going to casually let her go. He didn't say I'm going to dump her outright. He just said I'm going to casually let her go so that she won't be as shamed as she's going to be because, well, we know the culture. So he says that, but then the angel comes. Like Mary sees an angel who tells her she's going to have a child, Joseph too sees an angel who tells them Mary is having the child of the Holy Spirit. Mary is having the child of God, and you need to be there because you are going to be part of this story. You're going to be part of raising the child of God, being the father to my son, to the son of God. So Joseph hears this angel. He believes the angel, and he gets up and he goes the next day. Well, not the next day. He goes and he marries Mary And he continues to do the work of God. He is part of raising the child of Jesus, which raising the child of God, which could not have been easy to spank a child who's the son of God, to tell the son of God to be quiet, to tell the son of God, no, give that here, stop. But we know how kids are, especially toddlers and two-year-olds and mine, mine. No, it's not yours. But when it's the son of God, it's like, well, kind of everything's mine, Dad. So (laughs) it must have been a hard job, but Joseph does it. it. Joseph has an experience of God. He speaks to the angel, and his life is transformed. His life is transformed. He is changed by God. And he does what would have been difficult today, but definitely near impossible back in his day to face all that negativity and strife to face all that judgment to face all that gossip and ugliness and say I love Mary I'm going to stand up with her she's having this child of God I know this she knows this we're doing right by God whether you think so or not Joseph did the right thing because Joseph had an experience of God that changed who he is it changed him forever He had a close personal experience of the one true God so that we could be here today worshiping the one true God, so that we could be here today preparing ourselves for the coming of Christ, the incarnation of God in human form. God, Emmanuel, God is with us. Those words, that name, Emmanuel, changes who we are. God is with us. 
changes who we are. Prior to the birth of Jesus, God was at the temple. God was elsewhere. There was a place to find God, and you had to go to that place to find God. But Jesus changed that. God becoming human to know us changed that, and God became with us, always with us. You don't have to wait for the angel to come. You can sit and pray, and God will speak to you, and God will guide you into doing your best, into living out your faith as a Christian, to living out your faith as a follower of Jesus Christ, to living out your fruit, to living into your fruit and being the best you can be, to living into being a life of faithfulness, a life of love, a life of joy, a life of peace, a life of self-control. A life of goodness and kindness and generosity. A life that is filled with redemption because you've opened your heart to redemption. The one true God is with us so we can live into that every day. We don't have to sit around and wait for God or seek God. We don't have to live broken in our sinfulness and lost to our anger and frustration and misery. We can live each and every day as a child of God, a child of Jesus Christ who is redeemed and loved and forgiven and set for eternity with pure holiness. This is what Jesus has done for us. This is what that simple Emmanuel, God with us, what that means for us. It is profound. It is life changing it is transformative from the story of joseph we open up into the wide world of eternity with the beauty of our lord who created all who is in all who is through all who is with all and who is in us and with us and works through us when we open our hearts to that transformation, when we open our hearts to living out our fruit, whatever it may be, to living into being the best Christian we can be, the best person we can be. So let's go back to Ebenezer Scrooge and the Grinch. Y'all said, well, he was mean, he was rude, stingy, grumpy, self-centered, had the termites, stink, stank, stunk. Y'all are all correct. A little bit. Think about both of those stories. The best part is the fun of seeing how Grinchy the Grinch can be and how mean Scrooge can be, but we forget the ending. We forget the ending of both of them. Both of them were transformed by their experiences. The Grinch knew that Christmas comes even without all the papers and gifts and wrappings. His heart grew three sizes, and he carved the roast beast. Come on. We forget that. Scrooge hated orphans. He was stingy to Jim Cratchit, who worked for him. Bob Cratchit, thank you. Thank you. I got, I I paused because I got confused. He was stingy, he was mean, but he had a transformative spirit, three spirits actually, four if you count Marley's ghost, that changed him. And on Christmas morning, he woke up and he bought the biggest turkey, goose, it depends on which story you read, but originally it was the biggest goose. Casey will discuss later, something I can't say right now. But it was the biggest goose, but if you watch a movie, it's the biggest turkey. And I don't know that everybody's read the story. I've read the story. Have you read the story? Not everyone's read the story. I know, I've done that too. (laughs) See, it's a book. It's a short book, but it's... See, 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 this is why we explain the whole thing. Also mentioned the Disney cartoon. There is a Disney cartoon. There's a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Everyone's done the story. But... He is transformed, and he gives Bob a raise, and he goes and has Christmas dinner with Tiny Tim, and he lifts him up on his shoulder, and he is a changed man. But you see, the fruit we need to live into is not just our own transformation. It's we need to give up being the judgy people who remember the past and who miss the transformation. Because it's very easy to remember the negative and the bad. 
and the not so good. It's hard to look and say, there's good in this person. There is good in all of us. There's bad in all of us too. <laughs> but there's good in all of us. And in our heart and in our core, by our creation by God, we are made good by the one true God. Just as the Grinch and Scrooge were made good by God. So there's good in there. Joseph was going to live into the gossip and let her go. Say, we just didn't work out. It, was, it wasn't her, it wasn't me, we just didn't get along. But God changed his heart. God changed his mind. And he went on to become the father to raise the son of God. How many people do we see in negative light? How many people do we see just the past and not the present? How many times do we refuse to look at the good in others and a lot of times refuse to look at the good in ourselves? God is with us. God is within us. God is bringing good into our lives. We are part of God's creation and we were created to be good. And yes, some people don't get the message. But with most people, practically everyone, we are redeemable. Change can come. There is good within all of us, even if we hide it. So we need to look to the good within us and look to the good within each other. See the good within each other. Try to let go of the past. Try to forgive that whole Jesus thing. Forgive the sins of the past. To see who we are today. To see who the people around us are today. Because it's very, we live in a world of gossip and negativity and judging and finger pointing. And when we're so busy doing that, we miss the transformation. We miss the good. We miss the love. We miss the peace. We miss the joy. Consider your state of mind. And as you live into the fruit that God has produced in you, as you live into the fruit that the Holy Spirit is gifting you with, consider what you do with that fruit. How you live it out each and every day. How you show that you are transformed by the one true God. Or do you show that you're still back there being the grinchy, grumpy Scrooge? Or do you see yourself as wonderful, but everybody else is a grinchy, grumpy Scrooge? Transformation is from within, and it is the complete person, everything, not just who we are or how we act. It is everything, how we think, how we react, what we say and do. The world knows us as followers of Jesus Christ. If they're going to see that, we need to live into that. We are not perfect. We will always have grinchy days. But when you have a bad day, look into tomorrow. Remember, God is with you and pray and say, let's get better tomorrow so the world can see the beauty that Jesus Christ brings into this world. They see it through us. They're not going to know God is with them unless we acknowledge that God is with us. That's how the world is transformed through us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
You may be seated. If you have your cloth now, this is when we're going to lay cloth in the cradle. We've been preparing the sanctuary. We decorated with the greenery. We hung the chrismons. We've brought in wonderful music. We've brought in the poinsettias. And now we lay the cloth to prepare the cradle for Jesus' birth. So we'll do the liturgy, and after the liturgy, I'll have each one of you come up if, as you choose and lay your cloth in the cradle. Just lay it across either way so we can put in the swaddling cloth for Jesus to be born into our lives. If you've brought your warm wishes for the homeless, your gloves, your blankets, whatever, you can bring those forward now as well when you come forward. There's um, baskets up here for those. All right, well, let us begin with our liturgy. Darkness and light and all that's known by sight, silence and echo fading, weave into one a welcome for the sun, set earth its own maker serenading. Find him a shawl that's woven for us all, welcome the Lord of each tomorrow. Hungry and poor, the sick and unsure, Wealthy whose needs are the stranger, weave into one a welcome for the sun, leave excess and want beneath the manger. For the child, child for every joy sorrow. Find him a shawl that's one for us all, to welcome the Lord of each tomorrow. Wrinkled or fair, carefree or full of care, searchers of all the ages, Weave into one a welcome for the Son, the Savior of shepherd and sages. Well, for the cradle, cradle for the child, the child for every joy and sorrow. Find him a shawl that's woven for us all to welcome the Lord of each tomorrow. Come forward.
Here's a place for you, Lord Jesus. Just as our hands have made it ready, so make our hearts ready to love and to welcome you. Make us your Bethlehem where God is personal. All things and all people are made new. Amen. Our prayers continue. Almighty God of heaven and earth, you, you bring so much to us. This cradle with simple cloth means so much to us. Not just the birth of a baby, but a change to the world, a change to us. We are no longer forced to live in the past, forced to live with our sins, forced to live with every burden we've ever carried. We are made new. We live with Jesus Christ in our hearts. We live with Jesus Christ in our lives. And we reflect that to the world. Thank you, Lord, for the change you have brought upon us. Thank you, Lord, for the changes that will yet come. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that are yet to come. We pray for those who don't have enough warmth these days, for those who don't have enough food these days, for those who don't have clean water or a clean bed or any bed. We pray for those without loved ones to care and support them. And we pray for those, Lord, who need to know that you are real. We lift all these people to you now as we lift up now those cares and concerns on our own hearts. Lord, we lift all these people before you as we lift ourselves to you. Keep our hearts open. Keep our minds open. Keep us always looking for you and seeking you. And remind us, even when you don't feel near, remind us that you are there and that we have each other to get us through the difficult times so that we can always see the blessings ahead. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward? Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We ask your blessing on how how we give as well as what we give. Allow us to give fully of ourselves to you for your people and your world. In Jesus' name, amen.
right. Happy Advent. It's almost Christmas, but not yet. It's not as colorful today, so that's why you need it. It's even more important to read it. Read it. We won't be here next Sunday. We will be here Saturday night, 5 o'clock, candlelight communion, the story of Jesus' birth. It'll be a wonderful service. Come Christmas Eve, on Christmas morning, stay in your pajamas, do what you do on Christmas morning, and tune in to Facebook whenever you get the chance. There will be uh, a Christmas message in addition to the music of so a soup and carols. No soup, but the carols will be there. All right? And then we'll be back here January 1st, those of you who can make it up that morning. All right. Plus other stuff. The Youth Bake Sale is out front, and they'll be here Christmas Eve. Is that true, too? Sure. Well, that's what's on here. Okay. Okay. So buy some goodies from the youth. Have a great week. Get everything done, and we'll meet back here again Saturday night. All right? Yes. All right. Go today in peace. Go in love, and go let God change who you are. Amen. <laughs>